Hello, Bookaholics. This is Deirdre Pippins, the queen of Bookaholics, and welcome to my first time event, my book brunch book review. How's it going? Y'all got some cheese? Thanks for joining. How's it going? Okay, so I'm trying something new. Like I said, this is something new. So I'm on Instagram Live, but I'm also streaming to YouTube Live and Facebook Live and Twitter. So I'm kind of looking at two different cameras. I don't know how <laughs> this will go over, but I'm doing it anyway. Hi, Kent Danger. And let's see, let's see. Um, we want to add, let's, Kent, let's add Kent Danger because Kent Danger is our guest for today. Um, okay, so we've invited Kent Danger. And hopefully Kit Danger will join us in just a second. So today's um, point is to be able, hi, how's it going? Um, to be able to talk about books with some of my followers. Um, I always talk to authors, uh, people in the book business, but I'd like to hear from the folks that follow me um, and see what you think about books and what maybe I think about some books. And um, so today uh, we're going to talk to Kent Danger about two of the books that he's read recently. Uh, and maybe some of you might want to check these books out. How's it going, Kent? Hey, I can be all right. Yes, I sure can. And there you are. Um, okay, cool. So I just got to move that. Okay, and I'm adjusting my camera there. All right, so um, first of all, since this is the book brunch review, what are you what are you drinking today? I'm got my coffee. Well, honestly, water. I don't even know where it's at. But I should have brought that earlier. <laughs> okay. Can you hear that? Got a little feedback. Yeah, I think I have to leave one of the streams. All right, is that better? There we go. That seems to hi hi Emily Hunter. Um, okay, so let's dive right in. So you told me about two books you've recently read, mm -hmm. and uh, they seem very interesting. Let's start uh, with the one about Virgil Abloh. And sadly, uh, society and culture and fashion, hi, Abraham, um, lost Virgil Abloh. Um, you know, was it was it late 2021 or was it early 2022? I believe late 2021. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was it was late 2021. And so, you know, I don't know of him that well. I just know that he was a fashion designer. Um, he did the off white brand. I think he designed for maybe Louis Vuitton or some yeah. segment of Louis Vuitton. Um, but tell me why you felt like Virgil was an important part of our culture and society. Yeah, so Virgil, really, I think that his main thing was just being like multidisciplinary. He was like a fashion designer, also like very prominent in streetwear, but then like moved up to like high fashion design as well, which he kind of like tried to blur the lines between that, which is where Off-White sort of came from. Um, also just like a DJ, you know, just also does cover art for just different artists like Kanye West and Jay-Z's Watch the Throne. He helped facilitate the artwork for that. And he did the Yeezus cover art also with the CD and that kind of stuff too. So he's just got, he's had his hands in a lot of different places. Um, so I thought it was- Wow, I didn't know. Sorry. I didn't know he did all of the cover art that you're speaking of. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, um, and how old was he? He wasn't even 50, right? No, I think he was probably like 40. Okay, okay. So yeah. with that said, let's talk about, uh, what's the title of the book? Can you show us the cover? Yeah, it's called uh, Ableisms. Uh, Ableisms. Edited by Larry Walsh. Okay, so yeah. give us give us one of the Ableisms. And so yeah. while you're looking at one, give us one of your favorite ones. And so while you're looking for that, let me just go ahead and make a statement to say, we this is these are not our words these are the words of virgil abloh uh, this is copyrighted material we have no ownership or rights to this material we're giving full credit to virgil abloh and the man that edited this book so 
there you have that. So if you could read one of those um, so that the audience can get an idea of what an abloism is. Yeah, for sure. Um, pretty much it's just like different sections of things that he's talked about in different interviews that the editors brought together and compiled into one book. So uh, yeah. I just like an overview of the different sections. It talks about his like early years of his life, uh, influences and inspirations, his views on streetwear, fashion and design, his general point of view in art, his methods of creation, making an impact, art and creativity. And then it also just goes into like his biography as well. Um, oh. Yeah, so why don't we go into making an impact? Because I think that's probably where some of the most like inspiring quotes were coming from for me. Okay. Um, so this is a section called making an impact. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like basically just anything that he's thought about, about how to like make an impact as an artist or something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so here's one that it says, I'm interested in random kids from the urban city middle America, black kids into skateboarding and graffiti, but who want to participate in fashion in the art world. In previous generations, there weren't that many people from the same sort of position that I am on any sort of scale. I'm trying to inspire a generation of kids who largely weren't taught to believe that you could do these sort of things. So really like, he's just about like breaking down sort of like the barriers that a lot of people have tried to build up for just different people in different uh, backgrounds or identities and things like that, which is why I really like it yes 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 very important and in his seemingly short life he had a lot of influence um mm. over over a lot of young people so it's really incredible um find another one for us in another section yeah um okay i like this one actually because this is true so steve jobs would be psyched and i run my life through my iphone which is true like Pretty much everybody, oh. iPhone, whatever type of phone you have, smartphone, we pretty much run our lives through that. And there's a lot of things that's been automated in that way. So right. I'm saying that's right. true. That's very true. Whether you have an iPhone or not, that's still very, very, very true. Yeah. And so what, how, what would you say? Okay, so I usually do a five flame book review. You know, one being the worst that shouldn't the book have, shouldn't have never been published, and five would be what I consider a classic. So, mm. what flame um, would you give the abloisms? Um, I honestly would probably give it a five. I read it pretty recently, wow. and it was something that like I just kind of was doing. I wasn't intending to like read the book necessarily. I just was reading like one or two of them a day, and after a while, I eventually came to the end of the book. And every single day, I just tried to like apply what I read in this book to just certain things in life. And one thing that I really liked that he was saying is he was like, I wanted to escape this is sort of a paraphrase, but like I wanted to escape a nine to five job by having as many ideas as possible. So he's like, I challenge myself to have 30 ideas a day. So I remember one day I had a notebook or like my phone, iPhone notes, and I was like, let me just see how many ideas come to me in one day that are actually usable for like any sort of thing. And I think that I was getting up to maybe like 20 or 24 on my best days, but it's kind of hard to even commit yourself to pulling out the notebook or the phone and like actually doing that. So that was something I thought was very commendable for him. And it's definitely a really good challenge for anybody who wants to try and do that. Well, I think maybe he pulled that number. I don't know where the number 30 came from, but probably if you could have talked to him, he probably would have said, I had this number 30 in mind, but just the fact that you would attempt the action or even come up with 10, you know, would still be doing more than doing nothing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd be challenging. It's also the act of challenging yourself. So, so what I'm trying to say really is whether you're doing something like that or a goal in life, you know, the point of the matter is so, so many people give up and consider X, Y, or Z a failure. But it's the fact that you even try, that you even attempt, that you even go outside of your own mind to do something is part of your success. Right. Yeah, definitely. And, and people don't think about that um, and they don't give themselves credit for that. 
uh, and, and something might not actually pop off. You might have a whole book of, of the ideas, you know, written down. Something might not ever pop off, but it is the great thing about the challenging of yourself and seeing what you come up with is what is actually part of the success. Yeah, definitely. And that all kind of goes like, um, it's about the journey, not the destination. That that phrase, you know. So, mm -hmm. hi, how's it going, everybody? Thanks for joining. Um, so let's go on to talk about the Michael Jordan bi um, uh, biography or autobiography. Uh, it's a biography. Okay, show us that cover. Yeah, kind of torn up because I read through it a lot. And, okay, what's the title, Michael Jordan? It's Michael Jordan: The Life. The Life. Okay, yeah. now Michael Jordan is certainly a larger than life um, picture. Whoa, took my phone down from my. He's certainly a larger than life. So there we go. He's certainly a larger than life uh, person in our society. He's given he much uh, to sports, to business. So it's kind of. Um, he, he's such a huge personality. Where should we start with this biography? Um, and while you're looking at that, let me adjust my camera a little bit more. Okay. It's pretty much start to finish. You know, it's it's a pretty cohesive, or rather, I should say, comprehensive look at Michael Jordan's life. I'd say it's about six hundred seventy-two pages long. So like wow. it's pretty yeah pretty deep into like what his life is and it splits it up into like different parts. So you have like one part and then you have like chapters within each part of the story. Um, so like okay, there's so parts of his like early life or you know his time at like University of North Carolina, um, Chicago Bulls or like post Chicago Bulls and it just kind of goes into that. Exactly, exactly. And so let me just digress and sidestep right quick. So. Funny that we're speaking of Michael Jordan with the Tar Heel win last night. I can't, I can't not have mentioned that. I can't not have mentioned that. And Michael <laughs> certainly a storied part of the Carolina basketball. Hello. Uh, he's certainly a storied part of the Carolina basketball team and Carolina basketball history. He uh, played basketball at UNC under the an awesome coach dean smith and uh the the carolina story just keeps getting better and better and better and uh certainly michael jordan had a lot to do with that uh amongst other people but what would you say was the most shocking part of the michael jordan story um truthfully i think that whoever is really interested in this should read and find that out because I think that there are a lot of different components about it that are pretty shocking, like truthfully. Because um, mm -hmm. it's like, a, it's a very like real take on his life. It's something that like tells you the truth in every single aspect. So it starts like in the 1800s before he's even born. Wow. With, like, his father, yeah. There's wow. yeah, dad's father. Um, and it just sort of like goes through like how he like, um, raise his dad and then how his dad raised michael and just sort of like goes into like the actual way that like the jordan family was created and it also goes in like a slight background of like his mother's family and sort of like their side for a little bit and it, show, it sort of shows okay. like the people and their values that like lead you to even get to him in the first place and then it starts with like michael after a while and you know you just kind of see like how i guess i would just say it's like an overarching theme of like this book is his emotional response to everything that happens to him and i think that that's kind of like what truly made him like as determined and like as much of a winner as he was was that like he actually took everything personally even if it wasn't meant to be taken personally yeah so, like, yes. yeah was that idea of like him not like making the basketball team and that kind of like drove him to like really try hard at like becoming the best player he possibly could he was already like doing that in the first place and they try and you know put blame on the coach but the coach was actually like helping him further his career as well, like beyond that. So I think that they actually yeah. had like, it wasn't like a thing where like the coach didn't like him or like something like that. They actually had a good relationship. It just turned out that there were a lot of good players that at the time ended up being better or like a better fit for the team than he was. 
Um, right, right. So, yeah, basically, it, it was a really cool, like, in-depth look at some of the, like, legend, you know, parts of the legend that you see and that you hear, and it gave you, like, a more uh, detailed look at that. Yes, and, uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, I will say also, side story, I have a slight, very slight connection to Michael Jordan in the fact that we both graduated from UNC Chapel Hill, but I was actually there when he was playing. Uh, I am younger than Michael Jordan, but uh, I was actually there as he was playing, and I did get to watch him play ball as a college student uh, mm -hmm. in the Ding Dong. So, um, and I also saw him, you know, just like any one of us, hello, uh, just like any one of us, I used to see he and his parents, Michael Jordan's parents, they would be dining at the same steak restaurant as me and my other friends would be dining. So I actually saw Michael Jordan interact as a young man, a uh, young college student, you know, just like I was, except mm -hmm. for he was a great basketball player. So yeah, so I, I actually saw him and would see him casually and randomly, you know, on campus. Um, so then as life progressed and everybody's growing and he's playing for the Chicago Bulls and is very successful as a professional basketball player, then the news comes down that his father is killed and we're all shocked and we're, it's tr a tragedy. And there was a whole unseemly story tied to all of that. A lot of things came out, you know, around that time about his father, um, about his father maybe not being an honorable person, an honorable husband, let's say. Um, mm. So there was a lot going on in that whole thing. So does the book talk about his father's death? It certainly would have to. It impacted yeah. Michael greatly. It definitely goes into that for a while. Um, and it kind of discusses how people were thinking. Like there were, there were always like these superstitions and just like things that were coming up about his dad, which like you can get into that in the book and all that kind of stuff. But um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it always sort of had Jordan at a position where he was like, I would never like let my dad's relationship or anything like that, like affect what's going on, like nationally with this story. And it really was more so just like two people that like weren't connected to him that like ended up doing it. But right, yeah. right, right. It's yeah, like there, there was a lot. I would say if you're a fan of sports, if you're a fan of Michael Jordan, if you're a fan of college or professional basketball, uh, and with Michael being such an icon in uh, sports culture and in our greater society, business society, you need to pick up a copy of that book because mm -hmm. especially if you weren't around when different things happened, say like when his father was killed or when he hit that winning shot to help uh, Carolina win the tournament, um, you really need to go back. And this book sounds like it's very comprehensive and and read this story because michael jordan is a very complex individual there's many layers to him um as you get information from you know media you can see that he's a very layered individual um one last thing that i would like to touch on about michael is it's been said amongst people different people that i know that he's not really giving anything back he doesn't really get involved with society and what's going on with we'll say maybe like the black man in america and all of these different things it's been said before and nobody really knew about his contributions and i was happy to see uh, a couple of years ago when he opened up a clinic and in partnership with one of the big healthcare giants in Charlotte, that mm -hmm. he opened up a clinic uh, that would help people in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. So does the book talk about his philanthropic uh, and altruistic, um, you know, things that he's doing for culture and society? Well, it actually does touch on for a while about how people were discussing and he wasn't necessarily giving back and now uh he had a quote i think it was uh it was for like the harvey gantt election that was going on and yes. he was against somebody and people wanted him and especially his like mom wanted him to like endorse harvey gantt but he was like saying that he didn't know him and that's why he didn't want to do it and he was also saying like he doesn't want to get involved in politics necessarily because like everybody buys sneakers so like 
Um, right. I was pretty much saying it was against like his own interests uh, in terms of like capital gain. Uh, yes. As to why I wouldn't necessarily be like endorsing somebody to be philanthropic in that way. But I do think that as time is going on, I've heard more news about that. So, yeah. And the book, I mean, this book it ends kind of uh, about like 2014, 2015, something like that. So, oh, okay. I mean, 20 could have happened in between then. So, yeah. Right, right, exactly. Well, because the healthcare clinic is after 2014 yeah. and 2015. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's definitely after that. So what, um, the five flame review, how many flames would you give this book? Um, I would say probably like a 3.5, four, something like that. I think it was a really good read. I think it was, it was like a bit longer than I was looking to get into, but I'm like really into, you know, Michael Jordan. I'm also like, uh, as you know, like a native North Carolinian. So it wasn't just a book about Michael, but it was more of like a right. book about North Carolina, which was cool, and I enjoyed that and just getting a little education on that. Um, but I would say, yeah, I, I would say because of the length, that's the only reason why I wouldn't make it uh, like a yeah. five. Because if I had to read it again, I think that would be kind of, you know, a labor of love. So yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah, because there are such things as rereads, and yeah, to reread a book that's six hundred plus pages would definitely be a labor of love. So, yeah. um, so just real quick it seems like you like non-fiction books what's yeah. your favorite genre uh that's a good question I, I don't really know i think that i like books about business psychology a lot i like those kind of things i, I do like you know i guess inspirational sort of mm -hmm. things as well. mm -hmm. uh, or just like general like informational type of things like a like a guitar for dummies or like any kind of thing that will just like teach you how to do there we something go. We, lost you a little, we lost you a little bit you know how the internet connections are oh sorry i was just saying like anything that kind of just like teaches you anything that you can like apply um i, I like to take what i read and apply it to things so like i do like to read you know fiction for entertainment here and there but i think that that kind of comes few and far between because my main goal with reading is to like apply my information i guess Yes, 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 yes. Very much so. Very much so. So, um, how did you get into reading? What Where did that come from? Um, well, primarily from you, just you know, giving me the, I guess, like fire to do so. I, I think that as a kid, I was really into like fiction, just because it was like entertaining to do. But as I got older and just kind of like went through school, I realized like how much of a tool and how much like power that you can get just from like learning about a subject and then just applying that and you save a lot of time you know in trial and error and you know things like that it, it kind of just saves you time after a while even though it seems like it doesn't right 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 well full disclosure uh jordan is my son <laughs> yeah. so so but anyway yeah so yeah definitely i think uh, i might have had a little bit of influence on that for sure. So once again, show us the, um, tell us the authors and show us the covers of both books that you are recommending for folks to check out. Yeah, so we have Michael Jordan, The Life by Roland Lazenby. Okay. And we have Abloisms, which is edited by Larry Walsh. Perfect, perfect. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for joining me here today on Bookaholics uh doing a, my first brunch book review which is kind of like a tongue twister i really appreciate it and i hope uh, a lot of you got something out of it and we'll check those books out all right yeah of course thanks for having me all right thanks for being here all right thank you, thank you. have a great sunday all right you too bye bye, -bye. All right, perfect. Well, excuse me for my bad technical skills, but this is my first one. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, check those books out from uh, Jordan. It uh, sounds like they two, those two books will be a very good read. And thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you will join me for my next book brunch review. Thanks a lot. Have a great Sunday.